The real danger is not that computers will begin to think like men, but that men will begin to think like computers. Sidney J. Harris Humans are a stubborn species. In a world where animals and other organisms bend to the will of the environment, humans fight against it. Humans can traverse the sky without possessing wings. Humans can explore the depths of the ocean without possessing gills. Humans can even alter the environment, for better and for worse. With each new innovation, humans gain more control over their lives. But at what point does technology begin to replace humanity? Yes, I did really well in English class. So technology, it's great, isn't it? Life has been so much easier as a result of it. You can get water without having to carry a bucket to and from a lake. Just a flick of the wrist and boom, not me old. It's so beautiful. But are we becoming a bit too dependent on technology? There are numerous science fiction tales warning against humanity's growing dependence on technology. All those gritty future sci-fi stories have been trying to tell us something, and League is no different with these new project skins of theirs. What seems like a cool new character design actually holds a deep story. The story of Master Yi's struggle to hold onto his humanity. But of course, these being just a bunch of skins means that I will have to piece the story together myself. Cause if Rank ain't easy, then nothing in League is. So I'll do my best. Just remember that as of now, Riot has no written down established lore for this, so if Riot ever does release a project lore, then of course there is a possibility that it's different from the version you're about to see. With that out of the way, let's dive into what I'll call Project Ease Humanity. First step is to figure out the setting of the story, the place and the time period. After looking through some trivia points about the Project E skin, I learned that the theme behind this skin is one of the many possible outcomes for Runeterra. In this alternate, apocalyptic future, Master Yi is part of the Project Initiative, where members are augmented with cybernetics and other futuristic technology. So this story takes place in Runeterra's post-apocalyptic future. Now Runeterra is massive, so let's try to narrow down where this story takes place specifically. In order to determine this, we'll have to look at Project E's teaser video, Project Overdrive. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it already. Like, go type Project Overdrive and watch it right now. It's only 2 minutes and 58 seconds. When you're done, come on back. Just don't forget about me while you're watching that awesome video. Please. So Project E was awakened in a lab, which already narrows it down to two possible places, Piltover or Zahn, since these two places are the only areas known for research and technology. Also, we know it's a city because we get a glimpse of it right here. Now looking at this image and comparing it to the two available images of Zahn and Piltover, it doesn't really seem to resemble either of the two at first glance. So how else can we determine which city this is? Well looking back into the trailer, we can see that when Yi is awakened, he is shocked to see his metal hands. He is also strapped within a chair, leading me to believe that he is being held against his will. Lastly, he goes into a panic and destroys the room after a scientist forcefully injects something into his arm. That looks so painful. Uh, I kind of had like a little jitter while watching this video. <sighs> Anyways, if Yi wasn't there of his own will, then he probably was captured and forcefully experimented on. In any lab setting, if humans are the subject of experimentation, then it has to be fully voluntary and they have a right to know what the experiment is testing. They also have a right to leave the experiment whenever they choose to. These are regulations that are enforced by the government to ensure the protection of human participants. Now, between Piltover and Zahn, Zahn is the only city known for having almost no regulation with how its resident scientists do research. We covered this in the Echo video. Zahn scientists are able to push the limits of experimentation in order to produce results. Dr. Mundo has spent his life creating the perfect science-enhanced killer, but has also been acquitted of 38 separate charges of murder and has had an unquenchable desire to inflict pain through experimentation. Normally, this man would be behind bars, but instead, Noxus was impressed by his ambition and has allowed him to continue his experiments as long as he produces more weapons for Zahn to give to Noxus. Zahn is not above sacrificing human rights for the sake of science. 
therefore, the only possible conclusion is that Yi was abducted by some researcher in Zan and turned into Project E for Zan's project initiative. An initiative most likely led by Victor, since Victor was the first scientist to augment his own human body with robotic parts. With his experience, I'm sure he would be leading the project initiative. Zahn is also known for testing their work on Ionia, and I'm referring to the time Singe dropped a chemical bomb on Ionian soldiers, and Yi is from Ionia. So this story takes place in a post-apocalyptic future of Runeterra, in which Zahn has started a project initiative to create the ultimate soldiers, their latest addition being Project Yi. Now we learned from the Project Overdrive video that Yi was rescued by other Project soldiers, Project Fiora and Project Lucian. If I made this back when Project E first came out, I would have probably said that Lucian and Fiora were projects that went rogue. But with the inclusion of the new Project skins, I can create a more cohesive narrative. You see, Project Ash's new dialogue reveals to us that there seems to be some sort of resistance movement against the Project Initiative. They cannot take our past from us. We aren't weapons, we're human beings. My humanity cannot be overwritten. So long as you refuse to obey, you are human. Join the resistance. Resistance is not futile, it's human. We will free the others. There is a resistance movement against the Project Initiative, and this resistance is led by Ash. Now, Piltover is known for being the opposite of Zahn, a place where technological innovation is regulated. Though Piltover produces an abundant amount of techmaturgical, is that a word? Techmaturgical marvels, the city's denizens strive to be as environmentally friendly as possible. They are constantly developing new and improved methods for renewable energy. This is a major contrast to Zahn's densely polluted sky called Zahn Grey. So perhaps Piltover created their own project initiative to combat Zahn's, after gaining the knowledge that Zahn has been abducting people and forcefully turning them into cyborg soldiers, Piltover decided that the only way to stop it is to match their power, but instead with volunteer soldiers. This would explain why Yi and Zed look like complete robots while the others still retain human features. For instance, they still retain their arms, faces, and hair, while Zed and Yi just look like other robots. No traces of humanity left on them. But what about these two? As we've learned before, Echo is proud to be from Zahn, so why would he fight against it? Well, Echo might love Zahn, but he recognizes its faults. This is clear with his interactions with Zahn's mad scientists. See? You're part of the problem! Go where you want, Mundo. Outside of Zahn. You give Zahn a bad name. You're everything wrong with Zahn! So I'm willing to bet that Echo was so horrified by Zahn's project initiative that he is willing to work with his city's rival. After all, he wants the best for Zahn, but in order to do that, you gotta get rid of the worst. Now from the reveal trailer of the new Project skins, we learn that Project Katarina is against Ash's resistance movement. So we can assume that she is on Zahn's side, but she clearly looks more human than Zed and Yi. Why didn't she go full robot? Well, Zahn and Noxus share a mutual, beneficial relationship. Zahn provides weapons for Noxus, while Noxus provides resources to Zahn. Katarina is also one of Noxus's top assassins and a royal house member. If Zahn wants to maintain their relationship with Noxus, then they won't turn Katarina into a mindless cyborg like they did with Zed. Oh, that's right, I didn't mention that. I believe Zed no longer has control over his mind, which is why he attacks Yi, who is trying to escape the Project Initiative. It was an order given to him, probably by Victor. Ash's dialogue with Project Zed supports this. It's too late. You are but a shadow of a man. A weapon just needs the right hand to wield it. She refers to Zed as a weapon, no longer human. But she speaks to all the other Project Champions as if they were still entirely human. Since Zed is the only exception, it leads me to believe that he is now a mindless cyborg soldier for the Project Initiative. My other reason for believing this is Project Yi's condition. As a protagonist of our story, Yi needs a conflict, a struggle to go through that drives the story further. And that struggle is within his mind. Project Yi suffers from some sort of amnesia, partial or complete loss of memory for an extended period of time, or forever in some serious cases, which is shown in his unclear flashbacks in the Project Overdrive video, as well as his in-game dialogue. My eyes are clouded. A darkness lurks within me. Do not trust corrupted memories. Also, at the end of the Project Overdrive trailer, there is a link to the Project Teaser website labeled Reconstruct the Memory. The Project Teaser website is a face of Project E, which then zooms in through his face, entering his head. 
Therefore, we can conclude that the reconstruct memory line is referring to reconstructing Project D's memory, the central conflict of this story. Now, saying that Project D has amnesia is too vague because there are different types of amnesias as well as different types of memories that can be lost. So let's determine what kind of amnesia he has as well as what memories are lost. Judging from the video, we can see that Yi is having flashbacks of a fight with this shadowy figure. This is clearly an event that happened in the past which Yi is having trouble remembering. Therefore, Yi is suffering from retrograde amnesia, a loss of memories from past events. Now what kind of memories did Yi lose? Retrograde amnesia usually involves the loss of declarative memory. Declarative memories are memories of facts and events, such as names and what you did this morning. Yi's flashbacks are broken into segments, and even then he seems to only be able to remember a battle he had in his homeland, which we can tell by the Sakura Blossoms. He wouldn't be able to remember this fight or the identity of this shadowy figure clearly because that falls under declarative memory. But wait a minute. You might be wondering, how come Yi still knows how to use a sword? Master Yi's mastery, no pun intended, of the sword falls into a different kind of memory known as procedural memory. This involves unconscious memories of how to do things, things learned through repetition and practice, basically body memory. So it's perfectly plausible for Yi to retain his memory of the blade as well as how to use his ultimate ability, Highlander, which he demonstrates in the trailer. Now we have all the elements for our League of Legends sci-fi story. In Rune Terra's post-apocalyptic future, Zahn attempts to create the ultimate army of cybernetic soldiers. Thus, Victor began and continues to lead the Project Initiative. To do so, Zahn abducts humans and forcefully augments their bodies, enhancing their abilities with cybernetics. However, in order to maintain control of these cyborg soldiers, Zahn's researchers forcibly erase all of their declarative memories, memories of anyone they knew, any events in their lives, even their own names. All that remains are their procedural memories, their memories of how to fight, how to kill. This was the fate of Project Z. As a response to Zahn's project initiative, Piltover creates their own line of augmented soldiers, soldiers who volunteered to fight against Zahn. One of their most important missions to save Project Yi and convince him to join their cause. Thus, they send Lucian and Fiora after him. The two find a way to force Yi to awaken before his memories are fully erased, causing Yi to go into a panic at the realization of what he's become and destroying the lab that created him. I am no one's pawn. After breaking Project Yi free, the three seek to escape from the lab and into the city until they're confronted by Project Z, who has been sent to stop them. The three manage to escape and regroup with Project Ash. Although Yi has been freed from the lab before he suffered the same fate as Zed, Zahn's influence still remains. The voice of a stranger echoes in my mind. These are not my thoughts. Yi's mind has been corrupted, clouded with the commands from the Project Initiative. Project Yi still has some memories of his past, memories of his homeland, but they're scattered from the forced retrograde amnesia. All Project Yi has is his blade, his memories of how to use one. I have held this sword always. With nothing left of his physical body, Master Yi can only rely on his memories as his soul linked to his humanity, but he is finding himself slowly losing touch with it as his memories continue to remain fragmented. Understanding his struggle, Ash reassures him. Don't think you are Yi. No, you are. Project Yi's story is kind of ironic. That which he has trained for all his life, his skill with his blade, is both the reason why he's lost his humanity and the only thing he can cling on to from it. I wonder if you can psych out a robot. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little narrative I put together from just a bunch of skins and dialogue. I think it's good enough to make some official lore out of it. Hmm? Come on, right? I'm technically still available for a job offer. Thanks for watching as usual, and if you're new to the channel, then my people welcome you. We got two more people who joined since the last video, and I'm excited to have you both here. Speaking of two people, I have to go separate two brothers before they kill each other. Anyways, thank you for watching again, and remember, if you know anybody else that might like these videos, then feel free to share them. There's nothing wrong in doing so, and I'll see you guys next time.